Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Polk. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. I know with the uh, House of the Dragon finale this week, they had the uh, the little max teaser of what's, co- what's to come uh, on that service in the future. And yeah. Well, yeah, but the other two items are House of Dragons. So there we go. Yeah, there um, we go. All right. Because also part of this little teaser for Max um, was um, shots of A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, which is another Game of Thrones spinoff. Um, so we'll be, of course, checking that out when it comes out. Is that coming out next year? Yeah, that 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 will be coming out next year. And it's set 100 years before the events of, House of uh, Game of Thrones. Throw out the timeline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, okay? Yeah. Um, and, and so any word on the Jon Snow spinoff, is that yeah. still happening? Yeah, because I felt like there was progress and then I think the strike happened and yeah. now it's, it's not being talked about. But honestly, there, there has been a lot of Game of Thrones spinoffs that were announced and then never came to fruition. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm surprised we're at House of Dragons season two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 yeah. The, it was like what seven at one point. It was getting to, yeah. it was getting the, into like the Star Wars. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It was, it was yes. pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Yeah, um, uh, and yeah, and to confirm, and I'm looking at two two reputable sources, both Variety, um, which is a trade, uh, in April of this year, the the Game of Thrones Jon Snow spinoff is no longer in development. Okay, okay, that is a good thing. Um, yeah. I love Jon Snow, but I I don't think the zeitgeist is ready for that to go into the future while we're still trying to clean up the past of yeah, Westeros. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and speaking about House of Dragons, season three will start filming early next year and will conclude eventually with season four. So they're stretching this out another two seasons. <laughs> So will like the the war actually happen in season four or uh, no uh, season three? So the <laughs> showrunner was very very clear that yeah. the show the battles the battle of the gullet and all that stuff will will uh, will finally happen in season season three. Yeah, yeah. I I heard like the writers' room have come out and said like they were they they were officially for from what I understand and will correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> But it sounds like originally it was supposed to be 10 episode season and then they got mm-hmm. told you got to shove it down to eight for some odd reason, probably because of money. That um, was that was the reason. It was yeah. budget, budget Dragons strikes. aren't cheap. Dragons yeah. aren't cheap. That's why Game of Thrones, like you only saw so much of Daenerys and her dragon <laughs> <laughs> throughout the season. They ain't cheap. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so I understand that. I understand that. That's not necessarily my complaint about yeah. this episode or this season, but um, to start on a more positive note, we're going to let Will talk and share his overall thoughts about this season finale. All right. So, yes, House of the Dragons, season two, episode eight, the queen that ever was, uh, season finale. And yes, I know there's a lot of discussion and feelings about this episode i feel i think i'm probably in the minority but i actually really not only did i think it was a good episode but i I really thought it was a good season finale i did and i I watched it twice it just to make sure i wasn't like prisoner of the moment um but um or you know so having just feelings of um recency bias or whatever whenever whenever i watched it the first time and uh you know, I know people say it was underwhelming. Everything's personal preference. I completely understand why people thought it was underwhelming. And I know we'll, you know, I know we'll discuss your thoughts about that here this evening. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and yes, there was a lot of setup and this whole season was, was set up, but, um, you know, to me, it felt like I, 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 I kind of looked at it through like the lens as I looked through like Star Trek, the next generation, the uh, best of both worlds. One of the seminal episodes of Star Trek, one of the whenever people hold up cliffhangers as far as cliffhangers that like make you just 
just can't wait for the next thing. Uh, that that to me that was how I felt about this episode where we you know and that in, in Star Trek Next Generation we had spoiler alert Picard was adopted by the Borg. Riker is looking at him as Lacutus on the bridge of, of the Borg ship and Riker's on the Enterprise and he is you know we get that scene where he's like fire mm-hmm. as far as and and so and then it cuts off and that's how i felt like with this episode like you know we had the montage of everybody coming together all these armies because it takes time to like build up a b- armies and 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 all the things and so all these steps that we've had all through the prior seven episodes to me led to this moment so that when we got the finale there and we got the final shot of Renera, we you know with the scrolls and stuff there in Dragonstone and and Allison looking out over over the bay. I I was like I and it went to cut the black. I was like I my my that night my reaction was like wow. I was like I was really really I I bought it. I was like this this is great. Um it set me up for the anticipation for like the actual battle that's coming. And this is before I knew any of the things about the, you know, the budget and all those things for reasons Mm -hmm. why it didn't go there. But I, I, it, 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 it was almost like in another thing, it reminded, I felt also like another like situation like this, where you had a lot of lead up to it with infinity war. I know I'm using other properties to like give you, you know, analysis, but that's that's, fair. That's fair. Yeah. That's, that's how I felt about it. Yeah, because I can say how they're different. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, they're different, but I mean, but I well, think there was a lot of no, lead no, up no. and stuff. Yeah. Um, like, I'll, like, I'll let you finish. Yeah, um, yeah, just yeah. For I, I mean, I think there was just, I mean, to the point where you know, because you know, there were, yes, there was a lot more action and stuff, obviously, you know, with like, for example, with the MCU. But I mean, but it's just, to me, it's the analogy for me is you had a lot of setup in those prior films that led you to that moment with infinity war and the, and the big battle there with Endgame game, when we get the conclusion of it, that uh, feels very similar to this, where we had, we all, I will, you know, I will stipulate that this was a lot of setup. Yes. But at the, at the end of the day, I think we'll get the good payoff with a battle that will hit our expectations in that third season. So that's that's just sort of my opening yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong. You never watched yeah. Sons of Anarchy, right? Uh, I did not. Okay. I watched that entire show. And for your listeners who also watched that entire show, you know what I'm going to complain about. The freaking montage. I have montage PTSD to this day from watching Sons of Anarchy. Do not put a montage in an episode. I will just be mad. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> Okay, Sons of Anarchy ruined all, like, I used to love montages, and then I watched that show, and I hate montages, because they're just so lame, in my opinion. And it's just, I'm just like, oh, so we're just going to go slow motion, watching people do stuff, like, the big build-up, and we're not going to see the next season for, like, two and a half years. (laughs) (laughs) It's just just so frustrating for me. And I would agree with you, but I know how far out the next season is. I mean, mm-hmm. like Infinity War, you watch that, and that actually is a cliffhanger. I don't, I don't agree that this is a cliffhanger because honestly, the whole season two is a cliffhanger of season one. <laughs> <laughs> if you're really thinking about it, <laughs> like uh, yeah. the entire season has been a cliffhanger of season one because you, as soon as Luke dies, you're like, oh shit. Oh yeah. shit. And then this season two has been, and, and I understand it. Like you like if you go back and listen to some of my thoughts on some of the early episodes, I I'm totally team black. And there was a point where I'm like, this is just unfair. Okay. I don't like this. I feel like we're on the losing side and I don't I don't mm-hmm. like where we're going. And so they had to stretch it. So well, not stretch, stretch maybe isn't the right word. But they had to use this time to get Renera into a point where you could actually see there being a good battle. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't, the way they did it from start to finish, for me, I was not entertained. (laughs) 
Uh, no. Well, huh. like mm-hmm. I just, I just, I, I think that this is a good show. It's fine, but I just there's and 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 I'm I'm this is my disclaimer. I am totally comparing this season one. Season one, in my opinion, is leaps and bounds better yeah. than season yeah. two. And it's just really hard for me not to because I was so obsessed with how that all played out. And I thought the tension, I thought the characters, like, honestly, one of the best moments of this finale is when we get another Allison and Renera scene. Yeah. But that, to me, also just kind of illustrates why I had so much issue with the season because they were apart for most of it, yeah. except for these few moments when, again, again, it also is just like, I'm glad they're in a scene together, but seriously, why is it so easy for these two to begin scenes together? <laughs> it's just, it's just not, I'm like, that's literally the queen mother who's just like, I'm going to take a hop over to Dragonstone. I'm just going to skip on over here and nobody's going to find out. It's just, there's, there's some flaws here that I'm just, I'm just, it, it rolls my eyes. And then even Damon and Renera, like they were apart. Like these characters, yeah. I almost feel like what made season one so good is it was so zoned in on this one family, mm-hmm. and it and it just the world felt small, the story felt small, and then they expanded this season, and. But- and I don't know if necessarily how it expanded, like really, I I don't know. There is there's just something missing because I keep now thinking about Game of Thrones and Game of Thrones. My God, that world was huge. You could only spend so much. You have an hour, an hour and a half, maybe episode, and you have like five to six different families and lineage and and history and all of this stuff. But that show started that way, and this show, it, it started more honed, and now it's trying to expand. And I, I don't know. It's just um, yeah. those are my few first first thoughts about um, that I wanted to share. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I I agree with you that what what did help make season one stand out and uh is 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 the pairings i mean alice and renera their their story and and and, it, and it, you know and i think with the way that you know basically just this, that that is the, the structure of this show is is those two i mean we, we we you know because i remember our discussions early on what that was something that we felt was missing and we finally did get that scene in the was the third episode where they were out where renera you know went to yeah the, uh, and it was, the, the two or three of the clandestine mission yeah. to to and they had their discussion there so yeah yeah i mean they probably had all told as far as the screen time together this season probably what 10 minutes 15 minutes well, max <laughs> i'm glad that you brought up that scene though early on yeah. this season because this last scene um the you you could see the roles have shifted Yes, um, yes. Because now you have Renera looking at Allison. It's like, what are you going to have me do? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah. you, like, you, and I just, I wanted her to say, you said it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, like, let's go back, I don't know, a week or so. Yeah. Let's go back so, a few weeks and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's, like, there, it's just the chemistry between Emma Day RC and, and Olivia Cook. I mean, that scene, I think even more so than the scene early on between them in the church, like the scene in the finale is just a masterclass in acting. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then they ruined it and undercut it by having a freaking montage. <laughs> yeah, I don't the, the montage did so when you when you was edited the other way to end with them with because I I I will say that I agree that the i would have preferred that they ended it with that with with the with that conversation and allison walking out like that i would i do agree with you there um yeah. uh, because i think it would have because the because uh, that scene and seeing how things have shifted and as far as like how how now renera 
you know, it's very interesting. They, they have shifted roles where it goes before Renero was going there and, uh, you know, it, 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 to try to stop, you know, come up with the, you know, let's try to stop this thing before it goes too far down. And, 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 and now it's the other way. And, and now Allison, you know, uh, I, I, I saw a great like video, someone like, but, cut together of like what would you have me do and that and, you know and Renier was like um saying look you know son for a son and 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 actually thinking back to the first season uh it was Hi- Otto who was like saying look the only way this is going to go is Renier is not going if, if 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 the blacks win then you're you're going to lose Aegon and all your family because she can't you know she can't like she can't leave someone there to challenge her and so I loved the way they bookended those kind of things with this finale. Right. Um, uh, so, I mean, so for me that, you know, that, so that to me, that was a great payoff of, uh, of all of, of all these things that's uh, and seeing this, how the things have shifted throughout, throughout the season and how Renera has come to that point where it's just like, look, you know, I tried my best to like, not end this thing with bloodshed, but, Y'all have forced my hand with all your mid dealings and 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 you you know, usurping my authority here, and you you know and, and twisting the story to your to, to to your own ends. So now y'all forced me to this place where you have have been to like even get commoners to ride dragons to to end this thing. So I you know so I, I really felt that that some of the politics and some of the the, the, the drama was 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 really driving me throughout this season with the sort of seeing how that unfolded and we got but to to your point about i, I think i think whenever we got to i think part of the problem i think maybe some people are feeling i don't know if this is you or not but i think from the instant you know with the battle at rook's rest i think everyone really thought from rook's rest forward we were going to get the battle of gullet and all those kind of things and then now, the show I did even know what the battle of gullet is that's the There's that's no that's the, the, the gullet is the uh, why uh, Tyrod Ty, Thailand was had gone to the tri the triarchy to get more ships because the gullet is the blockade. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I I I no. I'm not. I'm not that type of. Okay. Not that viewer, and I I don't I don't even necessarily think that that has been a big discussion point of at least what I've heard about the criticism of not only the finale but of just season two in general Mm -hmm. um I do I do think a bigger point and a bigger difference between our two perceptions is again reminder guys Will has not watched Game of Thrones so so the song of ice and fire Mm -hmm. if you watch Game of Thrones you know what happens and and you also know how the show ends and so the there was so such much more emphasis on it especially in the finale because you have another montage <laughs> of damon <laughs> through the three-eyed raven looking and seeing the white walkers seeing um I'm just, and I said the White Walkers because there's some debate on if he actually saw the Night King or not. So I'm mm-hmm. just going to say the White Walker. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you see Daenerys and you see what's to come. And I just, that, <sighs> I know the show takes 200, takes place 200 years before all that. So it kind of drives me a little bit crazy when they're like, oh, well, winter is coming and and I'm going to do this because that's to come. I'm just like, dude, you are so early. <laughs> like, <laughs> and this doesn't have anything to do with you. I don't really know. Like, well, kind of, sort of. But it's just, it's just annoying because mm-hmm. we already know how that story ends. So it's a very tricky thing yeah. for people who are knowing with that knowledge viewing that as a motivations behind the actions of the characters in this present story do you know what i'm trying to say yeah i hear you i hear you i mean i 
I mean, you know, I'm not. I didn't watch Game of Thrones. I haven't read the books, so I'm I'm truly coming in, in this with a blank slate. So, so since, but you know, but I, but I didn't, but I know enough of the lore just because I mean it's such a, a you know it's, it's part of the it's cultural zeitgeist. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, so when I saw those things, you know, I saw Daenerys and and the White Walkers and everything like that. I mean, you know. You can't be in this space without knowing the sort of the, even if I haven't watched every minute of it, I, I'm familiar familiar with what happens. Mm-hmm. So, um, but to me, and, it, and it, it, for me, it really was, and we talked about this last week too, because with the visions, and we had some disagreement on that, you know, as far as I thought the, the, the visions were with, with, with seeing Viserys and it, it with with the crown last week and 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 all and it, to me it, it was a, it was a payoff for me because you know I think back to Damon and Rhaenyra's fight at the very very beginning of the season this season and whether or not he was going to be loyal to her or is he or is he just going to be Damon out for Damon so you know so seeing all the seeing how how the whole Heron Hall, but I know mid season, I was kind of like, kind, I was, I was, I was getting a little, I, you know, I, I did. I even commented, it's like, you know, joked about how it was like a show in and of itself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but whenever I got to this part of it, I, to me, it, whenever he did pledge to her there in front of everyone, whether it was, you know, you know and but because of the vision that Alice had him you know, see, he was at a place now where he could he could re- be receptive of it. So so for me, it, it was like, OK, narratively, it made sense why he had this whole this epiphany and, and why he now believes, believes the prophecy and Aegon's Aegon, Aegon the Conqueror's dream. Mm-hmm. So it worked for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm not surprised. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, which is good. I mean, it was a good moment, but it's funny how you mentioned some um, comparisons to other properties that mm. this finale in particular reminded you of, um, and and it see and those were favorable comparisons for me. Yeah. Like I already mentioned the montage and what that mm. reminds me of. But this whole scene between Damon and um, Renera and it coming to a head and then having that exchange, man, I just I just went right back to the movie theaters when I saw Return of the King for the first time in theaters. Mm. Mm. Um, the movie that has 7000 endings <laughs> and just is so long, like the second one, honestly, is my favorite Lord of the Rings movie. Yeah. yeah. So. So I was just like, oh, great. <laughs> like, <laughs> this <isn't> good. <laughs> so in a way, some of these things, some of my, um, some scenes, I understand why they work and I understand why it happens like that. But it just reminds me of things that are not, yeah. not favorable. Yeah. <laughs> I will say what that, yeah, yeah. I will say some fun things that about that scene too was Sir Simon <laughs> back there in the background, like clapping and, and uh, and then also another thing that stuck out to me, thinking about too, back with the beginning of the, of the season, uh, was whenever Renera and and Damon were talking to High, High Valerian, and he and she was just like, "Don't you ever fucking do this again." <laughs> I yeah. just really love that moment. I mean, it's just those those, are, those, and I think that again, the totality of of the of the moment is what what help helps sell it for me. Um, in addition to just uh, just just this. In addition to this, how, obviously how well acted it was, and then, and also uh, what was named the uh, Baron or whoever who had, the Renera had sent to uh, go um, see what was see where Damon's head is on this, and uh, I, I couldn't help but notice he like was scurrying out of there uh, whenever uh, Damon pledged loyalty back to, to, to his loyalty to Renera, uh, especially whenever you had the uh, uh, the 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 wood the woods like you know whispering traitor. Uh, there earlier in the episode. Yeah, yeah, that was a a forewarning of yeah. uh, of who what he really was there to do, and his yeah. he was there to portray R- Renera. Yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, we had, we had all of that going on. Um, what what was your take on um, the villain of the season, Sir Christian Cole, and his uh, <laughs> PTSD? Yeah. yeah, I'm fucking your sister. So what? <laughs> She's nice <laughs> to me. Um, He's just yeah. What's your take on all of that? Oh, my man, my man, Sir Kristen, he, uh, yeah, he, uh, he's like, you know what? I've looked into the eyes of a dragon and, and I, I survived the, uh, I survived being a ground zero and, you know, whatever, peace out. What, what my fate is sealed. I, this is all, you know, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, strike me down, Gwang. I, I, I died, I died at Rook's Rest. Did you, <laughs> so did you, like the scene i did or did it okay okay i uh, for once i was just like you know as much junk as we talk about cole he actually is making sense here no no yeah he he is he he makes sense um the th- it fell out of place and here's why because yeah. we did not see him at all i don't think in last week's episode Oh, he was like gone for about three episodes after Rook's Rest. Yeah, after Rook's Rest, yeah. I don't think we saw him again. I know. I no, we definitely did. Oh yeah, we saw, we saw him briefly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, we saw him briefly. They brought back was, the dragon. Yeah, yeah, we've seen him, but I'm pretty sure yeah. we did not see him last week. Well, we didn't see him last week. I think the last time we saw him is maybe. Yeah, it's been a couple episodes at least. Because I think he got the he got the breast napkin I from really Allison. I think it was one episode, but yeah. yeah. So, so then to have this moment yeah. and, and I don't know about y'all, but I'm kind of like Rook's rest is a thing in the past. <laughs> so we're <laughs> to bring it up. Like I knew, I understood that it had an impact on him. Mm-hmm. I think I would have appreciated this whole thing more had he not been such an asshole for the first few episodes and arguably season one, like, because, you know, I, I, I defend Allison. I've been defending her all season. I I like her. I can't be mad at her. She makes sense all the time. Cole has one scene where he makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) Then I'm just like, I still don't like you because you, in a way you help lead us to this. Yes, um, but I, yes. I do, I do think it was an important scene, just in terms of the theme this season about yeah. the gods mm-hmm. that are presented through the form of dragons and like what that means. Yeah. Um. I just, I don't know. I, I almost feel like I wish there was some other people who we could have seen that through the lens of rather than who I the person who I've painted as the villain of the entire show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would have been, been interesting coming out of Eamon's mouth, for example. <laughs> yeah, and and I also, in a way, I found um, Allison's brother. I can't remember mm. his name to uh, save the life of me, but yeah. When we first got introduced to him, I was like, oh, my God, this is a Lannister wannabe. And no, he like he himself have, has changed throughout the course of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, And he even is kind enough to tell Allison, like, her mothering didn't make yeah. these people who obviously should never be king. But. But it was it was just King's Landing on its own. And then he has this moment with Sir Christian. Like, like he's very interesting. Um he is. Yeah. So so I don't know. I there again, I don't hate I don't think this is a trash season of television. No. There's no. been worse train train wrecks that we've watched and reviewed. But it's just it's just a matter of comparison to season one where I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's yeah. very, very yeah. different. Very, very different. Um and, yeah. and also the other interesting pairing and some very cool scenes, which had a lot of TMI, is um Aegon and Laris. Yeah, yeah. 
So so season three is going to feature the adventures of Laris and Aegon. <laughs> well, the I'm so the glad point. they didn't kill Aegon. I am too. <laughs> like, yeah. he... I the he he just early on even when he was like still the kid who we met in season one mm-hmm. it just he he just there was something about him where I'm like I don't like you but I'm curious like you're mm-hmm. not you're not you, I don't know what you are yet um and and then having having what happened to him occur. And to see where he is now, yeah. and and I lo- Laris Laris is playing. I don't know what game he's playing, um, but he is keeping his cards close to the chest and getting getting his key to the kingdom fresh mm-hmm. out of town. Because he's like, nope, nope. Let your brother die on the throne. We will come back and retrieve it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Laris is playing a long game. He, because uh, I think he, you know, he saw the writing on the wall when it, I think, I think he was trying to like manipulate. Obviously, he was trying to manipulate the situation when when Aegon was injured, but Damon wasn't having any any word of it, and and you know, it's a, not Damon, excuse me, Aegon was not having any word of it, and 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 especially when whenever he was looking you know he want one of the few moments of like good leadership that a Aemon had was when he was asking for Otto to come back um and so Laris was like okay let me see how I can you know the whole the, the whatever he like first went to Aegon and with the whole cripple and or, you know and then of course last week we saw him really working him hard to get back into shape so he can he can you know ultimately i guess get well enough to escape king's landing which um for whatever plans he has in the long term uh i you know it's a fascinating thing here to see it you know to see how it, uh, laris is really manipulating the, the levers here because you know first season you know it, it was gaining favor with allison and then now, you know, he's just sort of working his way through the family as far as, uh, you know, seeing which way the wind is blowing. And uh, well, so, yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know what his ultimate ultimate in favor for himself. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, I really liked I really liked those scenes with the, the two of them this week as well. And uh, yeah, and Aegon really, you know, this again, talking about um, uh the evolution of the of the character throughout the season and also you know i think Aegon, i think laris sort of plays a, a weird in a weird role that nurturing void that Aegon had with allison because you know throughout the season she you know the, the times that he tried to reach out to her um she she you know, she rebuffed him so i think he you know so i think laris also plays that role with with Aegon at, at at this juncture as well. Oh, I hope not. I hope yeah, and uh, it, 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 for in Laris is warming ways, but <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. He Laris honestly almost has become less warmy in the last yeah. few episodes. Yeah. He started off that way, but and I, th- I think because himself, he he's deformed to an extent yeah. too. Yeah. Like you can yeah. understand why he want. Like, I don't know. There is just they've they've done something with his character and I can't quite put my finger on what it is because yeah. I don't yes, he's playing a game, but to me it's no longer just a political game. Like yeah. he yeah. he's survival. It's like, no, we're getting out of dodge because we're either we do this or we die. Like yeah. that's yeah. there's no if ands or buts about that. Yeah. Um and it's and what what also is very um, interesting is like this season we at the beginning we were talking about the two boys, Amen mm-hmm. and Aegon. And heading into this season, I know a lot of us felt like we had a better idea of who Amen is as a character and what his whole thing is. And I'm sorry, this episode just kind of pointed out to me like. Yeah. Aemon has not changed at all. Nope. <laughs> and there's no character growth. 
And I'm just like, we went another eight episodes and you are still the exact same person that you were at the beginning. What happened? (laughs) (laughs) Like, I don't, I don't know. I, it's just, it's just as interesting how really the person who could, should be the villain. I'm like, I don't even know you as a character. Mm. I, I feel like I spent more time, um, with Sir Christian than I did with Eamon. And that's why I paint Sir Christian as the villain. <laughs> yeah. 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 Eamon is very, I mean, he, you know, he tries to fashion himself as his uncle. And, um, but I, I would agree. I do agree with you in this, that he, yeah, he, he, he's, he's been pretty consistent with and true to himself as, as far as. But I don't even know what that is anymore. Like it's, it's one thing like to have a consistent character and I love consistent characters, but it's another thing where it just feels like they're there and they storm in mm-hmm. and they storm out. Yeah. But there isn't like it, I guess in a way it doesn't feel like it feels like he has a singular purpose in this mm-hmm. story. Therefore he shall not be given a, a story of his own. Yeah. Uh, well, Especially in this season. Arguably in season one, he had somewhat, so much more. And that's why going into this, I could hardly remember Aegon's name for the first episode. But I knew Aemon. <laughs> I knew <laughs> he was the guy who was being teased. And then they got into a fight and he stole a dragon. And then he almost killed a boy. And then he got his eye taken out for it. So an yeah. eye for an eye. And the son for, like, fully understand Aemon. Fully understand his motivations. This season, we start off that way. And it's like, oh, you still got the same. So you're still going after your bullies. Okay. Okay. You're still going after your bullies. And then you get the crown. And then it's just, I don't know. There, there was no like bigger evolution of it. Like, or more nuance of it. I don't think. Yeah. I think by he is not, he is not nuanced by design. Yeah. I think it, I think you 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 know I mean I think you, what you've identified with them is that this this is who this is who he is, and every, you know and and, so, and you need that foil in the story and he's he's that one for the season. Yeah, and he needs to the actor needs to start saying his lines a little bit differently. He started to bother me. There was something with like his his. Uh, Cadence. <laughs> I'm just. Like, oh, I noticed that whenever he was with the whole thing with Helena. Uh, but yeah, I did, I did notice there was. Exactly I felt there was. was thinking about. <laughs> and then I don't know if it was more malevolent or like it was just something about it, but he was just like I was frightened. <laughs> I was I was just like, why 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 so quickly? Like why why what is going on here? <laughs> why? I'm completely taken out of the story. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it took me out of it. It, it was just the, the 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 I don't know the desperation or just yeah, just uh, you know I guess maybe that was sort of the th- the through line that was supposed to happen in this episode for, from Sharp's point through, throughout with his interactions with his sister was just right. Right. I yeah. I understood the desperation yeah. in his character. It it kind of came a bit sudden, but then again, he just realized how he doesn't have the upper hand anymore. Yeah. So he yeah. threw a tantrum, destroyed yeah. a city, whatever, killed people, whatever. And then he tries to rope his sister into it, which, but I think it's, and I really don't like putting down actors, but there was something about that scene where the actress who plays Helena was just acting in circles. Mm-hmm. Like, like she was just doing something else. And it wasn't, like the actor, I think Ewan, if I'm not mistaken, he yeah, does a yeah. very good job with with like the staring yeah. and like expressing the emotion and thoughts through his eye <laughs> <laughs> um, and face. Very yeah. good job. But when he actually says lines, there's something about it. It, it they always feel so rushed, mm-hmm. which does not feel like something Eamon would do because Eamon's a very like 
fear me, I shall say one thing, but like, I, yeah, he shouldn't be talking at a, at a faster cadence. He should be talking at a slower cadence because well, he, he, like he has all the power. I think, well, you, yeah. And I think that to your point, um, as far as the des- you know, you notice in the desperation. I think that's that. I think that was the the, the chain that that maybe not the character evolution, but I think given that he was like thrown off his 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 usual cold, calculating self, I think that was the point of that this this week. Because yeah. you're right, he normally is very cool, collected, you know, ice and veins, but he this week he was just like he was frantic for, for him. <laughs> Yeah, and he got the most screen time that I feel like he's gotten in any episode. (laughs) Like, that's another reason why I just, I don't know what they're doing. I understand what they're doing with his character, but I'm like, you're not going to do anything more with them? Come on. We got all this other, these other characters who you've, you've taken time to flesh out. I mean, uh, but... But I don't know. I mean, at this point, we probably know more about Hugh and, um... (laughs) Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, yeah. Very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Speaking of who, who and Ulf and and uh, Alan, excuse me, Adam, um, or Ad- see Yeah, it was one. Yes, yeah. it's Adam. Yeah. Adam, Alan's yeah, Adam. The other one. Yeah, Alan's the other one who like yeah, who who Corliss was offering help and uh, <laughs> that just didn't didn't go quite the way he wanted it to. <laughs> Slapped him across the face. Yeah, right across the face. This yeah, is was, a good scene. I like that scene. I like that scene too. I like that scene too because it's like uh, Cor- Corliss like all this time he's been Mister Swagger and you know not a you know not a not a claiming either one of these boys and now now that Renee is gone he's like I'm alone. I mean, but yeah, but I, th- I was listening to uh, uh, the actor who plays uh, Alan, and he was just talking about where, how he, I think it was, maybe it was in the, the feature right after the episode about how where he just brought that from a place, playing off of the actor who plays Corliss, Steve Toussaint, and how that, how that scene sort of went. But yeah, I thought that was an excellent scene, and also just, you know, it's like, bas- you know, basically, yeah, I work for you. That's all I want from you. I work for you. I'll be your first mate, but beyond that, don't don't try to be like my father now after all these years. And then, um, and then, so that's while we're talking about Corliss, I thought his scene with with Renera, I thought was also very good and just you know really, you know, I think things that I have another thing I have missed with this show, and I know you know obviously it's just that someone had you know the, the we were definitely were missing. Renice, the second half, back half of the season, because I really think those earlier four episodes before she, uh, before she died, I will say, you know, she did bring in another level to to the the, the court of, with the blacks and 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 just just her, her interactions with Renera, you know, I think was just uh, and even Corliss. I mean, uh, she's always been sort of my MVP. You even thinking back to season one. Uh, the queen that never was, which Corliss did nicely, named the ship after her. Yeah, um, yeah. Which also yeah. again showed growth with him because he's you know he went from being Mister All About Himself to like, you know, well, trying to think of others. Right. I I think um, I yeah I really like Renice, but I am I'm not. I'm not going to say that I miss her necessarily just because with her absence, we've gotten to see more of Cor- Corliss yeah. um, and gain some new perspective on the Valerian family, as well as um, just in terms of his dynamic, his, this, this situation. I feel like Renice is a crutch for both yeah. Corliss and Renera. So to have her go further in the story would be too easy. You need to kind sure. of remove the crutch. Yeah. Um, that's and plus this yeah. has allowed the opportunity to get Maurice, the the white worm in there. And um yeah, yeah. so so i I feel like they kind of exchanged Yeah, that's true. Um, that's fair. Yeah. I Yeah. 
And you're right. I mean, now that you mention it, I mean, I do miss her, but you're right. I mean, I, one of the things I have mentioned over the course of this season, especially these back half episodes, is Miss Arya has stepped into that role. And, mm. and, 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 and you're right. I mean, she was sort of a crutch that I think Renera would not have had the evolution that she's had if Renice was still around. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which is, has been good. And, and, and I mean, to go back to my whole thing about Eamon, you could honestly also argue that Renera hasn't changed that much. Her circumstances changed this season because she went from the losing hand to a fair fight. Yeah. Um, and arguably even an upper hand, but mm -hmm. I don't know how long she'll have the upper hand because yeah. of other stuff. So it's, yeah, like... The season is not bad. It's not atrocious. I think any, the criticism, I understand and I also believe in a lot of the criticism that the finale, but I don't feel like it's fair to then just cast that across the full season. Yeah. Um, there, there are, there's been worse seasons of television, oh, yeah. but I can also understand people's frustration just because this is truly the extended cliffhanger of season one. <laughs> <laughs> and they had the audacity of putting a freaking montage in it. And it's like, we know, <laughs> we understand. Okay. Like, let's go because it only took you eight episodes to do this. And yep. now it's going to take you two and a half years before we get the actual <laughs> thing that we were promised. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and we found out what happened. Why, why Otto was in the dungeon? Yeah, <laughs> and see, that was another weird thing. There was that clip of that, and I'm just sitting here like, why, why, yeah. why tease me? Because, because two and a half years from now, I'm not gonna remember Otto was in a dungeon or be like, oh, what happened? To Otto? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have me. <laughs> I just, I'll, I'll remind you. I'll be like, hey, Sarah, don't forget he was in the dungeon. Yeah. And, yeah, and, 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 yeah. and, and, and Reyna was like, you know, finally. And I, the one, one thing that did bother me, I will say, was that that Reyna did not get the uh, sheep, the sheep, the sheep oh. dragon. Yeah. Oh God, that. that whole, yeah. Jeez, I, it's just this whole season with that character, and yeah. and I I will be honest, as, for some reason, for some reason, this is probably for, for the better of me. I did not pay much attention to her and what was going on, so I was oh. not that invested. Yeah. Um, but I feel for people who were. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Yeah, because I was like, okay. Um, so we're yeah, not she's like, <laughs> yeah, she's just, yeah, we're not gonna get anything. Okay, all right, but uh, <laughs> that could have been a really cool way to end it. Like she finally gets that dragon, or like yeah. maybe she's looking up and like the dragon's over, and we don't see the dragon, but we hear it. Like that yeah. would have been a cool. That thing. would have been better, but to have them like there in the field together looking at it, I was like, yes. And then, yeah. So that I will. That that was that was definitely a a, a a demerit for me for sure. Yeah, I mean, it took yeah. one episode for Alf and Hugh to get a dragon. Like, come on, yeah. why yeah. is it taking her like three or four? <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, yeah. I I am glad that um that we had fun this season. Yeah. Um. I wish it was two episodes longer. Don't get me wrong. Oh, I do too. I think I think this season could have been better with an extra two episodes. Yeah. Um, but but you know, dragons are expensive, so I get it. I totally understand. Yeah, because um, if yeah, because if 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 they had tried to force that battle and it had subpar special effects, you know, we both would have been ripping it apart. Yeah, well, I would have said one thing, and then I would have moved on. Because I don't really care about the battle. Like, the battles, to me, are not... Like, I really like the politics of it all. To yeah. me, I, and I guess... And you could argue, this, argue, well, then why didn't you like... Or ask, why didn't you like this season? Because it was very <laughs> political, like, politics-heavy. Yeah. yeah. I like politics of this show... But for whatever reason, the, I was not entertained by these because they kept, I'm just like, we're just circling here. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it would just, we're just circling, uh, circling. Yeah. And, and it's just, to me, it wasn't that the pieces and how they were coming together was not as fascinating mm -hmm. um, as in seasons prior. Like, yeah. Yeah. and, and, and I've said this and I hate, 
hate to overstate this, but it there was an absence of tension. There just mm. was for for whatever reason, even though it just the stakes weren't there for me this season. I'm not I'm not Christian Cole who wakes up in a field of ash and fire <laughs> and been like, oh my God, we're we're marching into our annihilation. No, yeah. like. I, be and I guess maybe it's because I I under I'm not afraid of the dragons. I think what the people who are making decisions should be far more feared. Just because mm. I mean, a decision Damon makes in the first episode leads to a little boy's head getting cut off. Come on, yeah, yeah, like. That that was that was really cool, and then added some tension, but then slowly, like very quickly, dissipated, <laughs> very quickly. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I I I I, I, can, I think that's that's totally fair, and and, and you know, and, and to to compare within season one to season two, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's I, I hear what you're saying. Um, for me, I think I I. Do like season one better i will say that too um mm-hmm. but um but um uh, but i don't think this but i think you're all you made a good point that i think a lot of people are casting aspersions on the entire season just based off of their being let down by the finale which i think is unfair because right. so for me i think this i i found the politics and i found that there were a lot of growth from with, with 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 most of the characters this season um and to to really set up the tent you know, where i feel i have anticipation for the upcoming season of of where of all the table setting and and seeing how these characters got to where they are i am now ready for what's to come and I think I will appreciate what's to come more in this civil war. To your point earlier, you know, this uh, you know, it, this is a battle of basically one family. Unlike Game of Thrones, where as you noted, you have multiple people vying for the Iron Throne. Here it is just you know it is at the, at its core. It's a civil war within the Targaryen family. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I am I am looking forward to what's to come because i feel like now i understand all the motivations all the cuts all the hurts son for a son etc cetera, etc cetera. now let's let's let now let's see how this unfolds on the battlefield and of course we'll still continue to have more politics and more treachery and and side you know and and side switching and all that kind of stuff as as the winds prevail and um yeah over the next two seasons yeah yeah in the distant distant future yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) um on that note will why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you yes you can find me on x formerly known as twitter back me at will m polk w-i-l-l-m-p-o-l-k and you can find me there too at SJ Belmont, SJBELMONT. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>